Hey everyone, it's Cody with After Five Outdoors. Today I'm here at the uh, Minnesota Department of Natural Resources office in Thief River Falls and, and we're going to be doing an interview with uh, Officer Johnson from the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. Officer Johnson is stationed in the Lake of the Woods area, so today's show is going to be um, especially geared for Lake of the Woods. So thanks for doing this interview with us today and we just kind of want to go over some uh, regs and rules on Lake of the Woods. So First thing I kind of want to talk about is like the uh, species that are on the lake sure. and just some of the limits and slot limits and stuff like that. So Sure. So things obviously that we want to ensure that we're doing before we go out and fish any body of water is to make sure that we know the exact rules for that body of water. Uh, lake of the Woods, of course, is a special regulations lake. So there are certain things that apply to Lake of the Woods that don't necessarily apply to inland bodies of water and different lakes that you'll come across throughout uh, Minnesota. So things that we most commonly see that the special regulations would apply to kind of fall into three categories. So I like to kind of round them out as limits, uh, as length and slot size, and then kind of a miscellaneous category. So if that's your... Uh, possession of fillets on the ice and uh, kind of the do's and don'ts that uh, just kind of lump into the last category there. All right, so the main species that we have out on Lake of the Woods that people are primarily targeting for are going to be your walleye and sauger, uh, northern, musky, um, crappies, there are bass in there that people will go after, and then you have sturgeon, of course, in a separate season as well. And so my favorite, perch. Well, obviously the perch, <laughs> but you know, the commonly referred to as the free fish, yeah, right? Yep, yeah, yep. fantastic. So uh, those are the main fish that we see that are targeted on Lake of the Woods. Uh, now, anytime you're going to a, a body of water, you wanna know the rules and regulations behind that specific body of water. So a lot of times what we see is people come up to Lake of the Woods, and they kind of are under the assumption that it's the same as any other lake that they would go to in Minnesota. So one of the things that I really highly recommend is anytime you're coming up to Lake of the Woods, grab one of these. This is gonna have just about everything that you need to know in it. Take a good uh, deep dive into it and know specifically what you can and can't do. Absolutely. Yep. So obviously one of the great things about you being here today and kind of getting this out is it gets that information out, it gets some educational points out, and we get a chance to kind of go over some of those grayer areas of what this may or may not say. Right. So I like to break it up into three different categories. So those categories being uh, the total number of fish that you can have, your limits, uh, the size of the fish, so those slots, and then kind of a miscellaneous category for having your fillets on the ice, et cetera, et cetera. So we can kind of touch on limits first. Um, really, there are only two species of fish that have a separate limit other than your standard Minnesota limits. And those are going to be walleye and sauger, kind of, of a combined limit. Mm -hmm. And then uh, northern, which is going to be a possession limit of three. So walleye and sauger is uh, an aggregate possession of six. No more than four can be walleye. Okay, so basically uh -huh. you could have four walleye and you could catch two saugers or you could catch three saugers, three walleye, as long as you don't go over four walleyes in your six. Exactly, okay. exactly. So there's no real number of, that you can have of sauger. Uh, obviously, you know, sauger and walleye are all counted towards your same limit of six, just no more than four can be walleye. Okay. So you could have three and three or two walleye and four sauger, or all six could be sauger. Just can't have more than four walleye. Okay, all right, cool. How about uh, the, the perch? I, I am a perch guy. Um, what, what is the limit on perch on Lake of the Woods? So perch is one of those fish uh, that has a daily and a possession limit. All fish have a daily and possession limit, but just about every species, your possession limit is your daily limit and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So just like for walleye and sauger, possession limit would be six. Um, that's both your daily and possession. So okay. that's something that we really want to focus on too, because yep. you'd be shocked at how many times we get asked while out on the ice. So what is my daily possession limit and what is my possession limit total? Okay. You know, they're the same thing. So if you come up fishing Lake of the Woods for three days, you don't get six fish on your first day and an additional six fish on your second, and then right. six more on your third day. Right. It's six total yep. that you can be in a possession of any given time. Okay. So we want to make sure that we hit on that. 
So with perch, that's kind of a fun thing about perch and why they're considered, you know, free fish, mm -hmm. is you have your daily limit and you also have a possession limit. So a daily limit's gonna be 20 for perch and then possession limit is gonna be 40. So it's two different things. So you can go out and catch 20 one day, you can go out and catch 20 more the next day. You just can't be over 40 for your total possession okay. limit. Okay. All right, so the next thing that we obviously want to make sure that we're doing is abiding by slot limits. So not only are there different um, keeper limits and uh, possession limits that you can have on Lake of the Woods, there are different size limits too. Uh, so the biggest one being the walleye slot limit that is anything from 19 and a half inches to 28 inches has to be immediately released back into the water. Now that is 19 and a half. Uh, anything you know under that is okay. You, you get that 19 and a half mm -hmm. inch fish that's right on the money. It's got to go back in the water. Okay. And then up to 28 inches, same thing. All of that has to go immediately back into the water. Except you can't have one over 28 for your trophy walleye. Okay. okay. So if you if you caught a 28 and a quarter, you could keep it. Correct. You catch yep. a, a one of them at least. Yep. 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 If you catch a 28 that has to go back. Exactly, okay. yep. Right. And now, so that only applies to walleye. Sauger, there is no slot limit, so you can catch as big or as small of a sauger as you want. There's no slot uh, or possession size for sauger. It's only applied to walleye. So it kind of gets confusing because, you know, the walleye and sauger possession are the same mm -hmm. aggregate number, but the slot affects uh, one, you know, instead of the other. So it applies to walleye, not sauger. Okay. Just to uh, not really go off track, but mm -hmm. In your work on Lake of the Woods, are you seeing uh, what are a lot of the bags or the the uh, um, fish counts that you're seeing? I guess of of anglers, are they catching more walleyes or more saugers? In this year, for sure, we've seen a lot more sauger being harvested than we have walleye. Um, you know, just in the last couple of months, I would almost put it at a four to one, five to one okay. type of number. Okay. We're seeing a lot more sauger uh, than walleye. And the class of fish seems to be a little bit smaller this season as opposed to years past. Okay. So uh, we're getting a lot of the smaller, you know, bucket fish where they kind of mm -hmm. just barely meet one side of a five gallon yep. bucket to yep. the other. Okay. So we're seeing a lot of those uh, and a lot more sauger than walleye for sure. Okay. Okay, so switching switching back a little bit now that we're getting into uh, March, and the popular thing that's going to be coming up is going to be pike fishing, tip up fishing, stuff Absolutely. like that. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the daily limits? If there's a daily limit, a possession limit on pike, and slot limits, and then uh, is there any is there any baits or anything that are prohibited on Lake of the Woods? Yeah, great questions, Cody. Thanks for asking. So. Uh, pike are going to be treated basically the same as a walleye and sauger. Uh, the daily possession is your possession limit, so that's three. Uh, you can't have any more than three pike. That's, you know, not three per day. That is a total of three at any given time. That includes uh, all fish inside your freezer at your home, anything that's uh, with you on the ice, and anything that might be at the resort that you're staying at if you are staying at one. So no more than three can be in your possession. Uh, there is a slot on northern... Uh, just like there is on walleye. The slot being anything from 30 inches to 40 inches has to be immediately released back into the water. So it's okay. a protected slot. Okay. So you can keep anything under 30 inches and you can keep one over 40 inches for your trophy fish. Okay. okay. Let's say if you were, if you just, you know, dropped a line down with a uh, um, Cisco or something on it and you get that hook, that fish hooked deep, if that fish won't go back, mm -hmm. what do you do with that fish? Well, at that point, if you do have a, a fish that came up and it's dead, there's no chance that you can, you know, release it live back into the lake. You'll just want to give us a call. Okay. Let us know, hey, this is what happened. Uh, we'll come out, we'll meet you, you know, we'll go over just kind of what happened. Uh, obviously, we can't let you keep the fish. Yep. We'll, you know, possess the fish from there. Uh, but it sure beats, you know, getting caught with the fish down the road and you know, then trying to claim that, well, it was already dead when it came over the ice, up on the ice. So I just thought I'd keep it. Perfect. So give us a call. Let us know about it. We'll come out. We'll meet you. You know, as long as you make the concerted effort to get a hold of us and relay the information on to us awesome you know that's what we're looking for we're looking you know we know that we can't control mm -hmm. uh how fi every fish comes up through the ice if we could you know they'd all come up healthy and alive yeah. and we'd be able to release them back in but that's not always the case so if that circumstance does play out just make sure you give us a call um let us know kind of what happened and we'll come out and we'll resolve the issue okay cool um as far as prohibited is there any prohibited baits 
for pike? Yeah, great question. Uh, so there is, um, one of the big things that we use for our tip ups and for our pike fishing uh, would be uh, kinds of species of fish that uh, are susceptible to VHS, you know, kind of the, the fungus that'll go through a body of fish. Now, Lake of the Woods is a VHS free lake. Thankfully, we want to keep it that way. Uh, so you can't introduce any species that uh, for bait that would be susceptible to VHS. So those are going to be your smelt and your cisco tulipy and your white fish, that kind of that kind of fish that uh, is susceptible to having VHS. Unless it's in a packaging that actually contains the information that it's been tested for and is uh, certified as VHS free. So a lot of the violations that we come bait wise that we come across for bait. Uh, or in regards to people going to just a grocery store because they know that they can get smelt for cheap and they can get a lot of them and now they got their bait for the weekend. They're good to go for a decent price. Um, that's awesome, you know, for your pocketbook for sure, but a lot of that bait doesn't come with the VHS certification. So it's got to be on the packaging that it's been tested for and is certified as VHS free. Okay. Um, so a lot of the bait stores, those are going to have the proper packaging that you need. Those are all going to be tested for it and they're all going to be certified as VHS free. So I would just really recommend that you take a look at whatever packaging your bait is coming in and ensure that if it is, you know, the smelt or the Cisco, that it has that VHS free designation on it at some point okay cool all right um is there any uh minnesota is not a barbless uh, or lake of the woods is not a barbless lake correct correct okay. yep uh, at least not the minnesota portion okay yep, yep. the uh manitoba i believe is correct um, yep. and then ontario is is in certain spots but um as far as a lure having uh so many treble hooks is there a limit to how many hooks the lure can have yeah so minnesota looks at single hooks and multiple hooks your treble hooks as the same it's all considered one hook even if a treble hook has three actual individual hooks on it uh, it's considered a multiple hook which is still counts as one so no uh, bait or lure can have any more than three hooks, total hooks, and that's whether they're single hook or multiple hooks. So you can have three treble hooks or three single hooks. Um, no more than three. And the spread between, you know, your furthest most hooks can't be more than nine inches. So as long as you're there, you know, there's going to be no issue with your lures and, uh, and how you're actually hooking your bait okay. and, and, uh, and presenting that to the fish. So okay. just make sure that you don't have any more than three hooks, uh, which do include multiple hooks or treble hooks, and that they're no more than nine inches apart from one end to the other. So one thing to, to branch off, uh, or not branch off, but in the same, in the same category as pike almost is if you were to catch a muskie for some some strange reason, would there be a difference from muskie to pike on Lake of the Woods? Yeah, so you just want to make sure that you're in that standard muskie season, and then you could keep it, um, assuming that it's uh, no uh, less than 50 inches. Okay. So uh, you're allowed to keep one muskie, but it has to be a minimum length of 50 inches, uh, assuming that you're within that muskie season starting uh, in June. So okay. Okay. Yep. So now. When we're coming into kind of the uh, the end of the uh, ice season, um, fish house removal on Lake of the Woods. Is yeah. there a date that the houses have to be off? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So it's one of the things that uh, the DNR obviously sees year in, year out is uh, we get all these uh, houses that are still left on the lake and usually not in the greatest condition uh, and they're you know, completely sunk into the ice, they're drifted in, really tough to get out. Uh, so a lot of times, unfortunately, people will just abandon them and leave them out on the ice. So we do have different dates that all shelters have to be off the ice. So it's not just your permanent structures, it's all shelters, even your portables. Uh, that varies based on where you are in the state. So there's essentially, they split the state into, you know, kind of a lower two thirds and an upper two thirds. If you were to draw a line from Duluth over to Moorhead, anything above that would be, have to be removed in the middle of March. Up here on Lake of the Woods, actually they give you to the last day of March before everything has to be off. We obviously have a little bit more ice, a little bit colder temperatures. Um, so we go through March 31st. So starting at midnight, basically on the morning of April 1st, every structure has to be off the ice, whether portable, permanent, doesn't matter. Okay, and 
you know, guys, please be responsible when you're taking your house off. How, how often um, does a person come across litter that guys leave and garbage and, and stuff like that? Yeah. Clean up after yourself. Right? Absolutely. Fantastic thing to touch on. So anytime you're fishing any body of water, obviously you want to treat it like it's the body of water in your backyard, right? Yep. You would want to treat it just like it's your own personal property. Because uh, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. It belongs to the public. You know, we want to make sure that the public's out there doing the right thing by it. So you'll see a ton of the resorts that have um, waste uh, uh, bins specifically designed for trash out on the lake. They're ready there for you to dump all your garbage into from your stay. Uh, you know, we've made it really easy to get rid of trash out on the lake. So just do the right thing, do the responsible thing, pick up after yourselves, pick up all your garbage bags and any waste that you might have and just take it with you, get it off the lake because anything that's left out there, needless to say, when the, when the ice thaws out, it's all going to go down to the bottom and it's just going to be sitting inside of our fishery. So we want to avoid that at all costs. Absolutely. Is there any anything that you want to touch on a little bit about ice safety at all, like with the uh, conditions right now um, in, in your um, in your travels? Has, has the conditions, the traveling conditions been pretty good on the south end of the lake? Yeah, traveling conditions on Lake of the Woods have been great. Um, statewide, uh, we've heard some horror stories about other lakes, right? That's why everybody's coming to Ex Lake of the Woods. <laughs> precisely, precisely. If, if in your opinion um, or your observation, how much has the pressure, fishing pressure, increased this year on Lake of the Woods? Quite a bit, quite a bit. So we actually sent up a plane uh, just a few weekends ago to do a rough count on on the number of shelters out on the ice. And just on the South Shore alone, uh, we counted over 4,700 shelters. So obviously that's a lot of fishing pressure that's out on that lake. Um, Red Lake just absolutely got destroyed this year. You know, I'm sure it's no secret yep. to anybody else yep. that they got hit hard with snow, that snow weighed down the ice and you'd pop a hole and up would come the geyser of water yeah. so makes it real difficult to fish so needless to say a lot of people wanted to come up and get some fishing in for the weekend awesome uh, but a lot of that uh, added pressure to the lake uh, definitely has seen some higher numbers for fish houses out on the lake and the number of fish being taken for sure okay so the next thing that we kind of want to cover is if you're if you're uh, let's say you're you have your sleeper house out and you catch your limit of fish and you want to eat fish how do you go about doing that sure so being on a special regulations uh, body of water means you know for the most part fillets aren't allowed to be out on the ice but of course how do you eat some fish without filleting the fish so there is a special caveat there that as long as you are in the process of eating and consuming those fish and cooking those fish you can fillet the fish so uh, what I always recommend to people is make sure the oil is hot or whatever you're cooking them on is prepared, ready to go before you put knife to fish. Um, a lot of times what we run across is uh, you'll have a bag of fish that are in the fridge of the ice house and uh, they'll say, you know, yeah, we're going to cook those up later tonight or yeah, those are breakfast for tomorrow morning. And well, not exactly legal. Can't have that unless you're actually in the process of eating that. Reason behind it being you're on a special regulations body of water. So because there are size limits and slot limits on the lake, all fish need to be able to be measured, identified and counted if we happen to come across you and check you out on the lake. So if I just have a bag of fillets from a fridge, I don't know if that fillet was from a 21 inch fish or from a 19, fish, 19 inch fish that would be legal. Right. So it's impossible to tell once those sides are off, right? right. So that's why having fillets on the ice in general is just illegal by itself. So. And unfortunately, I know that uh, I've, I've heard in the past of people coming from other states um, and even, even you know, fellow Minnesotans uh, leaving Lake of the Woods with a hundred plus walleyes mm -hmm. or, you know, and that's, that's not acceptable. You know, that's, I mean, it, as, as an angler, as an outdoorsman, our job is not only to, you know, go and enjoy the outdoors, but be respectful of it too. Don't take more than, than, uh, what you need. Um, you know, it's just not responsible. Be responsible. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. Couldn't have said it better myself. So the right way to go about 
uh, cooking and having a nice fish fry because let's face it what better way is there to you know have a dinner on the ice Absolutely. than to have a fresh fish fry right? it doesn't get more uh, you doesn't know get any better than that yeah exactly right no more free-range food than that so uh, the right way to do it the legal way to do it would be to obviously be in the process of cooking so start heating up your oil if you're doing a you know an actual fry uh, get the oil nice and ready to cook up uh, then you put knife to fish and start taking your sides off. So have your fish fry, enjoy, just make sure that you hang on to your carcasses. So legally, you're, you're obligated to hang on to those carcasses, so that way, if, uh, you know, in between the fish fry and the end of the day, you happen to get checked by one of us, we can at least still identify, measure and count those carcasses and make sure that, all right, we're still within our uh, legal possession limits and our size restrictions. Okay. So just make sure that you hang on to the carcass until the next day. And keep in mind that any fish that you do eat on the ice is gonna count towards your daily and possession limit for that day. Okay. So. so now let's say you, you uh, it's in the evening, you just filleted your fish and you ate them mm -hmm. and so to dispose of the carcasses, it would be best to drive to the resort or whatever, the, the location that you came out of to dispose right. of them, correct? Yeah, correct. Obviously, you don't want to leave them out on the ice or you know, even worse, you know, shove them down a hole yes. or anything like that. We want to get them off the ice, throw them away in you know, a proper receptacle for it. So there's no shortage of garbage cans at any number of resorts that litter the exterior of the lake. So make sure that you get your carcasses off. Uh, and then, you know, once you get into that next day, you can replenish your limit and, and catch whatever fish that uh, you might have cooked up the previous day. Okay. So. So now, um, let's say you were up on Lake of the Woods for three days, whatever, and you know it's your last day, you're getting ready to go home, and you've caught your limit that day, mm -hmm. and you want to fillet those fish before you leave. So you would take those fish out in whole to the resort, to like a cleaning shack, clean mm -hmm. them there, and then uh, what, would you, what would you need to do to, to uh, be following the law to transport those fish? So transporting fish, uh, really the main thing is to keep that one inch patch of skin on the fish. It allows us to identify what species of fish it is and makes it legal to transport. So um, if you're just transporting fillets, it's gonna be illegal. They need to have that one inch patch of identifying skin on attached to the fish. Um, because you're fishing Lake of the Woods, saugers are a possibility, right? And it's really tough to tell a walleye from a sauger just from that one inch patch. Mm -hmm. So that's why Minnesota requires you to actually have a head and tail uh, along with that one inch patch while transporting sauger. So we know that it's a sauger, not a walleye. Okay. So keep in mind that if you're transporting saugers, and you only have the one inch patch and they're cleaned fish like that, it's gonna count as a walleye. Okay. So you can really see how you can uh, kind of get into yeah. an over limit yes. pretty quickly just by an honest mistake. Okay. So that's why we love having these kinds of conversations and, and kind of putting that information out there and kind of uh, making it a little bit more clear and a little less gray. So make sure that if you are transporting those saugers, head and tail rather than just the one inch okay. patch. And now when you package your fish, do you want to jumble them all up so you guys have to thaw them out to try to figure out? <laughs> Absolutely, or? hands down the best way. No, thank you very much for asking and bringing that to light. So all fish when you're transporting, and even when you're out on the ice, have to be in a measurable and countable fashion, right? So uh, we see it all too often where they're you know slammed in the bottom of a garbage bag, and of course they all get into this they're frozen all. mass, Absolutely. and you know, you're just kind of picking it up like a basketball, wondering, yeah. all right, well, how many do I got in yep. here? What are the sizes? Yep. So that in, in and of itself is illegal. All fish have to be measurable, countable, and identifiable. So the best way that I've seen is uh, if you're just going to transport fillets, usually one or two fish inside of a Ziploc bag, um, you know, kind of folded flat on each other and just kind of stack them up you know, flat. That way you can mark, you know, what species of fish it is, how many are in that bag. You know, so you're not dumping out the entire contents mm -hmm. of a bag because you, you know, shoved 16 fish in there. The easiest way to do that is just kind of keep it simple, keep them so they're measurable, identifiable, and countable. So we kind of covered the limits and the uh, slot limits and transporting fish. Now, is there any any violations that you're commonly seeing um, out on the ice that maybe come from people just not quite understanding um, or maybe something that you'd like to address that hey you know uh, guys this you know we're seeing these violations and you know there's no reason to see them and people just maybe just aren't doing them like on purpose to be violators right. but it just 
oh, I didn't know that type of thing. Yep. Um, one of the things that we see that most people have a really good grasp on, but it's kind of more of a, it's a choice that they make, is the extra lines. Um, a lot of our fishermen are coming from out of state and they might have different rules from out of state and a lot of the violations that we see for extra lines are from in-state people so it doesn't really seem to matter where you're from it's a very big temptation especially on the slow fishing days right you're not quite catching you know the amount of fish that you were expecting to catch hey i traveled four hours to get up here want to get my fish yes, right yes. so that's where we see the temptation to th drop an extra line down the hole now of course on the ice here in minnesota up on lake of the woods regardless where you are i uh, can't have any more than two lines through the ice um, so with that in mind really avoid that temptation to throw that third or fourth you know line down the ice uh, like we were just touched on you know we had a plane up in the air that counted 4700 shelters just on the south shore of lake of the woods so imagine if each one of those houses just had even just one extra line down right. through the hole uh, you're gonna have 4700 extra lines yeah. adding to that pressure on yep. the lake yep. so really avoid that uh, you know avoid that that urge and yeah. uh, and just keep it to your two lines. So we already saw in Lake of the Woods this year, one of the new regulations was they dropped the possession limit from eight down to six. So you used to, last year, you could have eight total walleye and sauger, and it got dropped down to six because of a lot of the pressure and, and the numbers that were taken in previous years. So we just wanna make sure that we don't keep on going in the wrong direction, mm -hmm. that we can maybe get it back up to eight, because hey, that's a lot more fun yep. for the people coming up to fish. Yep. It's a lot, obviously, better representation for that fishery and, and a lot better sign for where that fishery is heading. So okay. we wanna make sure that we keep heading in the right direction, not the wrong direction. Okay. If you're fishing in a house, let's say I've, uh, I've seen guys do this and they'll have one line in the house and they'll have a tip up or something mm -hmm. outside, what, what's like the max distance? Do you got to keep that, that tip up within your vision at all times yeah. to be legal? Or Great question. So the, that's kind of how the state sees it. They see any lines that you're fishing with in the house uh, as separate from uh, tip-ups that you might be using out on the ice. So the main thing with tip-ups is you still can't use more than two lines. If you have one tip-up and one line inside the house, there's your two. You can't use two inside the house and then two tip-ups, you know, that's mm -hmm. four, right? Yep, yep. So uh, make sure that you're still staying within your two lines. And then any lines that you have, uh, you know, on the end of a pole that you're jigging with, that, you know, are your dead sticks, whatever it may be, they just have to be within sight, all right? So that's what is, con you know, that's what's considered a, a an attended line, is it's if you're within sight of it. Now, tip-ups, you have to be within 200 feet of right. that tip-up, and right. that's considered an attended line. So just make sure, uh, one of the big things that we come across is you get a group of uh, shelters that'll be out there right you know because you get 15 20 people that all come up to the lake together and have an awesome weekend but that's where you kind of open up the door for you know two people from this house go over and visit this house and then you know they all kind of go over and visit this house and pretty soon you see all these unattended lines mm -hmm. in each house and you know yep. anytime you're leaving that house going out visiting or grabbing a bite to eat whatever it is Really quick, just make sure you reel up your lines if you're not going to be attending them, and then you know carry about your way. And not only is it is it uh, you know lawful to do that, but why take it? You know, some guys use rattle reels, whatever. But why take a chance at losing a rod and reel? Right. I'm personally, um, fishing in my portable and jigging my one line, and all of a sudden, you know, I've got my my dead stick over there, and you know, I don't have a whole lot of line out and a fish come by and grab it and tip it off the chair and I've had to rescue my rod a couple of times and that's just yeah. you know from here to there so imagine you know leaving your lines and and going outside you know it could be utter chaos right so. and the flip side of that too say you and I are out and uh, we're fishing together in the house and I take off and I don't you know reel up my lines now I'm fishing for well now he's lines. fishing four lines so yeah. you know Cody here is going to get yeah. the tag for Thanks, that Cody. one Appreciate so yeah, you know <laughs> <laughs> that's what friends are for right man? Yep. Yep. so another reason just to take the two seconds reel up your lines yep. and then carry on your way yep, yep. okay so one more thing that uh we want to cover is licensing on your ice house. What are the regulations for the licensing on uh, sleeper houses? Yeah, great question. It's something that we've seen a lot of confusion on. Um, so if you have a portable, and a lot of people are looking at the 
the ice castles and the wheelhouses as portable because obviously you can trailer them around. But Minnesota sees portable as anything with uh, without fixed sides. So anything that can, can collapse into itself and that you can pack away so your clam shelters uh, and your pop-up tents, those are considered portable. Uh, your ice castles and your wheelhouses, uh, your, your spearing shelters, those are all considered fixed sides so they're considered permanent houses. Um, so with any permanent house, you do need to have uh, your shelter tag, your shelter permit. Uh, so make sure just like your, when you go and buy your fishing license that you also get a shelter license for that particular um, shelter. Okay. So each shelter that you have on the ice that's a permanent shelter requires its own shelter license. So you can't just have three houses and just you know transfer the one shelter license around each permanent shelter will require its own shelter license so one of the confusing things that we've come across is people think that well as long as it's not left overnight i don't have to have that shelter license uh, the actual fact of the matter is anytime you're out on the ice in a permanent shelter whether it's just for the afternoon or whether it's for a week straight you have to have a shelter license on it okay. the only time you don't need a shelter license is if you're just fishing from a portable and it's not left overnight okay one to expand on that just a little bit i'm not sure maybe you might not be totally familiar with it but i just thought of something sure does that fish house have to have a license to go down the road is there are you familiar with the regulations like is there is there a difference from lengths or anything like that where it needs a like a right. license to be on the traveling on the highway the fish house itself wouldn't require a license but the trailer that it's on okay. is likely going to require a license so what you want to do is just make contact with uh, your registrar you know in your area and just square away and let them you know kind of filter out whether it needs uh, to have a trailer license on it or not most of the time if it's being trailered the trailer itself is going to require a license so make sure you get that squared away before you hit the road okay. and just one other little quick thing when the house is sitting on the ice itself does it need to have reflectors on it Overnight it does, yes. Okay. So anything that's left on the uh, on the ice overnight will require some sort of reflective material on it. Uh, the other thing that's important to make sure is that you are marking and identifying your house. That's a big thing that we come across too. Uh, so we talked about uh, that ice house removal date, right? So one of the important things is that if your house, ice house is still out on the ice that we can give you a shout and say, hey, the ice house removal date has come and gone. We need you to come out and, and get your house off the ice. In order to do that, we need to have that identification on the side of uh, your ice house on the exterior somewhere. Right. So that's super easy. What most people do is they just take their nine digit Minnesota DNR number. It's the nine digit number on top of any license you've ever bought through the state, or you can put on your uh, driver's license number in your state of uh, your driver's license and that works just as well too. Okay. And, and just another reason for that too, uh, unfortunately it does happen once in a while. If someone were to break into your to your ice house and steal your stuff, hey, law enforcement has to get a hold of you and tell you, yep. hey, uh, something has happened here or Or, or you know, we smell a gas leak coming from one of the yeah. tanks. It yep. can be any number of yep. reasons that we'd want to get a hold of you to, me, to relay some information on you and, and have a chat with you. Super, so. super simple thing to do. Mm -hmm. So um, so real quick, we'll kind of wrap this up. Uh, we're gonna kind of rapid fire through <laughs> the limits. I'm gonna rapid fire questions to him and he's gonna rap rapid fire answers back to me. And and we'll kind of wrap this interview up. So limits on walleye on Lake of the Woods? Sure, walleye and sauger, six total. No more than four can be walleye. And none over 19 and a half, right? 19 and a half to 28 have to be immediately released back into the uh, water. You got time to make get a good measurement, Take a quick photo, but then it's got to go back okay. inside the water. Perch. Perch, 20 daily and 40 possession limit. Uh, one thing that we didn't touch on was crappie, because I do see occasionally some photos of, of guys catching crappie on Lake yeah, Woods. Sure. Just like anywhere else in the state, uh, crappie limit is 10. Okay. Is there a possession limit on crappie? Same as your daily limit. Okay. Yep, 10 right. and 10. Uh, pike. Pike. So, Total of three in your possession. Uh, anything from 30 inches to 40 inches has to go immediately be, be, uh, released back into the water. You can possess one over 40. Okay. Just the same as walleye, you can possess one over 28. And I guess for the guys that like the burbot, that's something we didn't cover. The burbot, no limit uh, on burbot. Catch them all, baby. All right, all right. <laughs> but don't throw them on the ice and leave them for the Yes, cars. thank you, absolutely. If so. you're gonna keep it, 
actually keep it. Don't just pull it out of the hole and throw it on the ice. That's a violation. That'll get you in some hot water. Okay, so after the uh, the burbot question, here we go. Um, fish house removal date. Fish house removal date for Lake of the Woods is uh, March 31st. It's got to be off by midnight on March 31st, so basically any time before April 1st. And what do you leave on the ice? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> Transportation of fish off of the ice. After you get off the ice, you go to the fish cleaning shack, you're heading back to wherever you're heading back to. Make sure you got your one by one inch patch of uh, skin on there for identification. Unless it's sauger, you want to make sure that you have head and tail as well. And make sure they're not in a basketball. Absolutely, right. yep. Okay, and one thing that we didn't touch on real quickly, is there a minimum age in Minnesota where you do not have to purchase a license? Sure, there's a both a minimum and a maximum age. So anyone under 16 does not need a license and anyone 90 and over does not need a license. Okay. Uh, but starting at 16, you do need a license. 16 and 17, real simple. It's just a youth license, very cheap. And then once you hit 18, you'll need your full license. And now just as we're at that time of year, does the ice, the uh, license not expire here shortly? Just it, the license expires, but the fishing season continues. Correct. So it kind of hits a weird area. You need to make sure that starting March 1st, you have your 2020 license. Uh, March or the 2019 licenses are good through February 29th, but here on Lake of the Woods, we can fish all the way through the middle of April. So you just want to make sure that starting March 1st, you got your 2020 license in hand. Okay, so we've covered a lot of things today and most of the things that we've covered are exclusive to Lake of the Woods and that is the um, that was the the reason behind this video um, if you guys have any questions out there if you want to comment or uh, whatever I will try to get those questions answered for you um, if there's anything that you would like to see in the future um, we're gonna be looking at trying to get some interviews for the rest of the state maybe later on also um, as hunting seasons roll around, uh, hopefully we're going to try to do a sturgeon video here Absolutely. when that gets closer. Just kind of to put out to you guys, um, if you're, you know, you want to go out there and you want to do what's right, whatever, and you have a question or you want to make sure, you know, you're following within the law, I'm going to do, we're going to do our best to put out the, the video to answer a lot of your questions. But if you do have any further questions, you can comment. I will do my best to get those uh, questions answered for you. So Officer Johnson, is there anything um, that you feel that we missed, kind of that you want to bring to light or any message that you want to send to uh, people that are uh, fishing on Lake of the Woods? Is there anything that you want to like just get out there to them? Anything? Well, sure. I'd say, you know, the most important things uh, anytime you're heading out onto the ice is to always keep in mind that no ice is safe ice, all right? Uh, if you have some form of, you know, ice picks, uh, you know, bring them with you out on the ice. Uh, just kind of keep in uh, in mind ice safety at all times. Uh, we have you know close to 30 inches of ice out on the lake right now. Awesome, but you just never know where those pressure ridges are gonna be. You never know where those springs are gonna be. Uh, and it can happen in a heartbeat where all of a sudden that ice gives way and you know, you're fighting for your life. So make sure that you always keep in mind that no ice is safe ice. You know, Come prepared and come with a, a good understanding of good ice safety. Uh, also, like we touched on, just make sure that you stay respectful of, uh, of any body of water that you're on, any forest that you're using, and protect our natural resources because they belong to all of us and we want to make sure that they're around for generations to come. Uh, last but not least, you know, always just take the few minutes to kind of take a read through this anytime uh, it's a new season or, you know, you're fishing for the first time, of course. Mm -hmm or if you're heading up to a new area that maybe you don't have much experience, just you know, take a little dive through this, read about what you can do, what you can't do, uh, just kinda you know, glossing through this uh, is good, actually reading it is even better, so it just kinda gives you a really good foundation as to what you can and can't do. Is there any digital formats to that? Like Absolutely. If you're, if you're so, on the ice and, oh, I don't have a reg book, but you do have signal on your phone, yeah. is there a way to? Absolutely. So. Uh, obviously these come just about at any place that you can buy your license and then online you can access it too through the Minnesota DNR website free of charge and it just helps you keep clear and keep uh, a good focus on what you can and can't do. Okay. Well, Officer Johnson, thank you.
you very much for your thank time. We appreciate it. Thank you very it. much for having me, Cody. And uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you again here shortly. You got it. So, guys, if you like this video, please like it. Please subscribe to the channel. We'll be putting a lot more of this stuff out. If there's something that you feel that we missed or if there's something that you would like to see expanded on, throw them in the comments and, uh, you know, and we'll get, do our best to answer them. So just uh, like, subscribe, and have a good day. Thanks.